Welcome to the Trial Site News Roundup. Today we're going to talk about an evolving story revolving an accusation of scientific misconduct associated with an ivermectin meta-analysis. We'll discuss what's going on here. And so, from Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and our episode starts now. So the ivermectin situation continues in controversy as a new French civic group known as the Bonds Sens Association made allegations of scientific misconduct associated with the ivermectin meta-analysis, authored by Dr. Andrew Hill and a group of researchers affiliated with the University of Liverpool and Unitaid. Now, we here at Trial Site News have gained insight into this unfolding story via a series of conversations with relevant and associated parties, some that wish to remain anonymous, that have shared that in fact this study was modified, separate and apart from the investigator. Now, according to some proponents for the use of ivermectin against COVID-19, at stake here is more than just an issue of scientific integrity, but importantly, the health of hundreds of millions of people and the operation of free markets, which depend on the rule of law, scientific transparency, and rational actions by government health authorities. Now, on the other hand, the overwhelming consensus among research institutes, regulatory entities, and academic medical centers, not to mention international health bodies such as the World Health Organization, declare emphatically that there is a need for greater, large, randomized controlled trials. And it should be noted that Dr. Andrew Hill, who is a well-respected researcher and advocate for economical treatments for COVID-19, is resolute and stands behind the study. So let's then take a closer look at this story. First, a reminder, here in the US, the official stance on ivermectin for the use of COVID-19 is this. The NIH has a neutral stance, neither for nor against the use of the drug. They say that there is insufficient data to recommend either for or against the use of ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19. Results from adequately powered, well-designed, and well-conducted clinical trials are needed to provide more specific, evidence-based guidance on the role of ivermectin in the treatment of COVID-19. On top of this, the FDA also cautions against its use for COVID-19, saying that they have not approved ivermectin for use in treating or preventing COVID-19 in humans. Now, back to the allegation. It was first picked up in interviews and then in French media centers on the meta-analysis authored by Dr. Andrew Hill, titled Preliminary Meta-Analysis of Randomized Trials of Ivermectin to Treat SARS-CoV-2 Infection. Now, a group leading the accusation is called Bon Sens Association, and they claim that this particular study was interfered with by either Unitaid, one of the study's sponsors, or other to be named individuals and modified so as to dampen or lessen the highly respected researchers' initial positive recommendation associated with ivermectin in the thoroughly pooled and analyzed clinical trial paper. So let's talk then about the allegations raised by Bon Sens. They suggest that perhaps a third party, not named as an investigator, took Dr. Hill's meta-analysis and materially modified it to, in effect, mitigate or lessen any perceived pro-ivermectin attributes of the reported outcome. Now, while the World Health Organization has already done what ivermectin proponents had feared, which is made a recommendation to only use the generic drug for clinical research during the pandemic, a key assertion in this charged situation is that the alleged altered meta-analysis study results influenced the World Health Organization's decision. So let's take a quick step back and look at Bon Sens, which is considered a controversial group by some in Europe. Now, we reached out to this group to gain insight into their allegations associated with the ivermectin-focused meta-analysis study position and were able to catch up with one of the Bon Sens founders, Xavier Azelber, for a brief interview which of course I will share with you now. The first thing to know about Mr. Azelbear's professional background is this. His background includes many years of professional experience in management, consulting, finance, and business, 
And he also noted to us that he runs a popular news site called Francois. Now, the group Bon Sens Association, which literally means common sense, is a civil liberties group that takes issue with many of the actions that governments in France and elsewhere in Europe have taken in association with the pandemic. Xavier explained that the idea for Bon Sens comes out of this notion during the pandemic that a diverse group of civic-minded citizens, from scientists and business folks to entrepreneurs, lawyers, and more, needed to be created to take on some of the more challenging dilemmas during this pandemic. Now, we also asked Xavier about one of the larger controversial issues that the Bon Sens group has been accused of, which was not supporting mask wearing. When we asked him about his stance on the issue, he claimed that they were not against mask wearing. Rather, he said that Bon Sens is not against mask as a means for personal protection against the virus. We simply ask intelligent questions about the risk and benefit analysis associated with mass government actions. For example, Xavier said that a widespread mask mandate nationwide, even for small children, without scientific backing is a measure that could be interpreted as a reduction of liberty with considerable impacts on children and others. So then we asked Xavier about the ivermectin meta-analysis. Trial site news has learned from others not only about the alleged modifications made to this important paper, but also that the group had already sent a demand letter alleging scientific misconduct to the University of Liverpool. Now, we have interviewed parties with first and secondhand information that claim that this modification did in fact occur and that Dr. Hill did not have any authority to do anything about it. Now, we also asked Xavier about Bon Sen's objective with the allegations as to the ivermectin meta analysis. He shared with us that they have sent the letter demanding that Professor Hill retract the study and address their allegations of scientific misconduct. He also noted that they have sent a copy to INSEM, the National Institute of Health and Medical Research. Xavier told us that they wanted to give Dr. Hill an opportunity to respond to the claims in a public forum. And thus far, they have received no response. Their ultimate goal here is to call attention to bias and undue influence in the health research system. Now, given that Bon Sens is not a legal or administrative authority, we ask what if there is no response? since they have no authority to compel anything else on this matter. Xavier said that yes, of course, Bon Sens is a civic group with a lot of very smart members that care about the truth, and that they wanted to give the parties the opportunity to engage and respond. And if they don't do well, that they would have a record should any future investigations at the university level or beyond occur. Now, we here at Trial Site News then reached out to Dr. Andrew Hill for his perspective on this matter. He is, after all, a highly respected researcher who in many ways has led the way in identifying ivermectin as a potential treatment for COVID-19 and has been up until now unwavering in his support of the study. Now, Dr. Hill told us at Trial Site News that he is happy with the final version of this meta-analysis as posted on Research Square. He reiterated that the dominant consensus of major research-based institutions and regulators emphasized that large randomized trials will be required to validate the clinical efficacy of ivermectin. And he went on to note that this is also the opinion of the US Food and Drug Administration, the European Medicines Agency, and the World Health Organization. And so we here at Trial Site News will continue to monitor this unfolding situation and we'll keep you posted as this continues to develop. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining us on our program today. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and I will see you all next time.